Hello there, welcome back to the new video. It's been a while I have put any video on this channel as I was a little caught up in my personal stuff, but no worries. We are restarting again. So in case you are seeing this video for the first time, make sure to check out other videos. And if you like them, do hit the subscribe button, share it across with your friends, whosoever is interested in such content. So let's start off with today's video. Today in this video, I'll be talking about rack systems, which is also popularly called as retrieval augmented generation and as we delve into each of these components that build up rag we'll look into what are the current limitations that these systems have and what are some possible resolutions or improvements that you as a developer can make to make your app more robust and production ready so with these three agenda in mind let's start with the first one which is what is rag RAG is a new buzz term that has emerged recently in the LLM community where it proposes a very simple idea. What it simply says is you have your LLM that you have fixed. Okay, so there are multiple cases where you can fine tune your LLM as well. Today in this video, we, what we talk about is we are assuming that your LLM is fixed and you are just using it for inference purposes. And now what we talk about is surrounding it. like. You fix the LLM, you just change other components around it. Cool. So what it says is you have your LLM fixed. Let's say you call it as Llama or ChatGPT for that matter. So if you would have asked any question to this model that it probably might not know the answer for, or these are very specific question for which you want answer from your company documents or any specific set of documents, Clearly, Lama doesn't know that intention of yours, right? So, so it will definitely try to answer that question based on the knowledge that it has gained over its pre-training phase. And the answer it's going to generate might not really be the one that you're expecting. So from that respect, you can call this as it's hallucinating, it's irrelevant, and so on and so forth. So with the new rack pipeline, the standard way of doing question answering over LLM changes a bit wherein now you give it relevant context from which you are expecting the answer so here it is how it looks like cool so you start off the document let's call this a wikipedia page from which you want a particular answer for a given question now we all know like the document can go maybe it could be let's say eight pager it could be maybe 50 pager it's a chapter from a particular book and so on and so forth so let's remove our example for wikipedia page let's consider it's coming from a book that's 50 pages long and you're trying to do a question answering over textbook so clearly charge you put your any other LM is not sufficient as of now to handle all these 50 pages at once so what better can we do like instead of giving 50 pages we create a smaller versions of these documents and let's say we do it at a page level, which is very obvious. This is page 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth, till 50. These are those documents where you have all the content of that page written down. What next? Which of these pages is really relevant for the question that you're going to ask? So you have another parallel component going in, which is you ask in a question. So for this question, which of these documents, one or more will have your answer. So you must have already guessed, right? This is a retrieval problem. So people often use vector database for this purpose, where the idea is like you save a vector representation of each of these documents and do matching between the vector representation of your question and the vector representation of each of these documents and you get list of ids corresponding to each of these documents which are nearest to the question embedding so let's say you get one and three as your nodes that might have the answer so now there are multiple nuances of how you implement a vector database in terms of which means do you just store the embeddings or do you store something else to give you more context around it so those are the calls that you'll have to take we'll talk about one of them as you move forward in the video so once you get the chunks your first phase of the rag is done which is retrieval now we delve on to the second phase which is called as synthesis where the idea is 
okay, you have gotten like two documents that might possibly have the answer, but what exactly is the answer? So here you now plug in your LLM along with the question that you wanted to ask and each of the context one by one, or it could possibly very well be giving at once. And then you get the final answer for your question. So what this entire system more or less tells is that the answer that you're going to generate will be from your document, more or less. That's not a guarantee. So this is how a typical rack systems look like. I hope it's clear with the example that I gave, right? So let's move forward and see the second aspect, which is the limitation. Okay, so there are two major components that we saw, right? One is the retrieval, another is the synthesis. So some of the limitations that you might face at the retrieval end, first of all, is how do you decide what is your chunk size? Because if the chunk size is less, you might lose out on information. If the chunk size is more, it might be a lot when doing the similarity with the question or for the LM as well for finding the answer from that bigger chunk. So this is something that you need to take care of. Then also the document might not really be a text blob. You can have a structure associated with it. What does that mean is it can have table, figures, paragraphs, and so on and so forth. So how do you handle all of that when doing your chunking? So that's another aspect that you need to think of because if it was a plain text, you could have simply done it at some, let's say, 512 chunk by creating a sliding window. In real world applications, you'll get a document that has a lot of structure. So how do you creatively embed those as well will define the accuracy of your retrieval system. The third aspect is the chaining of documents. What does that mean is, just like any text, you might have things that are referencing back to a different chunk. So for example, if page 8 para 2 is one of your chunks that says please refer to this table for more reference and the table was on page 3 at the bottom somewhere so for getting a proper answer using your lm page 2 page 8 paragraph 2 and this table should be your context that goes to your lm which says that documents are not linear you have you have several backlinks that you'll encounter. So, so this is also something that you should keep in mind when trying to create chunks. There should be a way that chunks are talking to each other. And at any given time, if required, you should be able to retrieve the relevant chunks that are related. So these are three major challenges that uh, you will face when building your retrieval systems. And then the obvious stuff, right? What embeddings do we choose? Are embeddings really representative of our domain or not? Do we need to fine tune them? And so on and so forth are some few things that also you will have to consider when building a retrieval part of the rack system. Okay, so now moving on to the synthesis where once you have received a relevant chunk, what can go wrong in terms of you not able to answer it through LLM? So as I said, right, LLMs can hallucinate what does that mean is that it's trying to generate something that's not there in your input document so there are many measures that you can put in to make sure that what you generate is from your input document if not you do not return that answer there can be a situation where llm can get biased or toxic in what it generates so those checks is also what you need to keep in mind when building a proper synthesis system second stuff that comes on the engineering end which is okay let's say you retrieved n number of documents by the way this deciding how many chunks to return is also a good parameter that you need to take care for generating good answers okay so what was i saying uh, if you have n chunks that you have retrieved yeah then if the if n is relatively large because your document was large, so you had a possibility of having a lot of self-references that you have put in place. And the, ch and the chunks are of a size that you cannot combine them while sending them to your LM. The size is, let's say, 2048 or 4000 or something of that sort that that's beyond chat GPT for handling more than one chunk. And you want to have the system near real time, so how do you mitigate that? 
So you'll definitely face that challenge if you do it synchronously. So the idea is to move from synchronous call to async calls where you parallelly send in a number of requests for them to process and that way you'll significantly reduce your time from T1 to T2 where T2 is much less than T1. So again, this is from respect to deploying your systems in production. Okay, so it seems like we have talked a lot, right? So <laughs> let's move on to the last part, which is improvement. So clearly, whatever were the limitations are sort of improvements that you can do. But I'll just talk about one thing that is really important, which is chaining documents. One of the ways of how you can add relevant context that helps you retrieve related documents when you do the retrieval. So there is a concept of inserting metadata while inserting the documents in vector databases, wherein along with the embeddings, you can insert some extra structured data that will give you this reference. So you can, let's say, do raw text of that chunk. You can do top three most similar paragraphs that you have found or top three most similar chunks. That is what you can store. You can store the page numbers of those retrieved chunks. If you're working on an HTML page, then anchor tag is good enough. You can store that information. Not only these page numbers, but any mention of page number in the text that says, please refer to page X, Y, Z. That is what you want to store as metadata. So now that's your call of what you want to store. These are some of the things that will help you build that graph-like structure wherein query comes in. And this is the most relevant segment that you have found. That's not the only information that you have. Now you have information like page numbers where this has a reference a certain text to. You have most related paragraphs and so on and so forth. So now all of this can go into the context of the LLM and not just the first part of it along with the question to get a relevant answer. So this system is likely to improve on the hallucination and the coverage of what LLM outputs as an answer for your particular question. So this is just one of the ways there could be many other things that you can put in place for handling all these things. So I know the document has come out to be a little dirty, but the time you understand what's happening and you have followed it end to end you should be good cool so i think we are done with this video and as i said this is a restart to our old schedule and i'll be putting out content so make sure to subscribe to not miss out the videos that come out on this channel and having said that i'll meet you in the next one bye bye take care and have a good sleep